Uh, do I got YouTube now? Yeah, yeah, that's, make sure the lads can see the, the chat. Yeah. And I'll start the thing. And we are live. There you go. Let's see. Do we have any? Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've got it on for me, mate. That's fine. Okay, can you hear anything? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. Thank okay. You no, you guys don't mind on full screen, no, no one's here to chat. Yeah, that's what we want. They'll just come up here. Yeah. Okay, we should be good, are we? Yeah, there you go, mate. Yeah, landed. Okay. Right. Brilliant. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday Night Show here at the Longlands Club. Uh, joining me this week is Guesty. Welcome to the show again, mate. Evening, James. You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Loads to get through this week. Sorry we weren't with you last week. Um, obviously, there was a few technical issues, so we weren't on last Monday night. So we're going to have a look, quick look back at the Reading game. Obviously, the Cardiff game at the weekend, um, and a look ahead to the weekend's game against Sheffield Wednesday. Um, we're also going to talk tonight about one of the Borough legends of the past who celebrates his 75th birthday today, John Ifton. So you will have yeah. plenty of memories about yeah, him. John. Yeah, uh, Tony. And we'll also talk about recently we've had the chairman, the captain, and the manager, of course, hailing from this town. So we're going to talk about why the borough's special, why this town's special in its people. So we'll have a chat about that as well, Tony, okay? As we say, everybody, this is your show. Share your thoughts and opinions with us. Let us know. That's what makes a Monday night show so special. So, as we said again there at the top of the show, Guesty, you've followed this club for many years. Uh, through thick and thin, mainly thin. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think that's the case? It's, it's our hometown club, isn't it? You know what I mean. It, you, you've got to follow your hometown club, James. Yeah. Like there's a saying where you, you I'd watch eleven, I'd watch eleven, butter tops drying on a washing <laughs> line. Do you know what I mean? Any, anything in a butter top, good, bad. You know, you, you watch them. Some people might say the last two seasons have been like watching some of. Uh... Oh, you'd rather be watching <laughs> watching the shirts on the line. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there has been darker times of course than what it is now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. But even back then, it was more fun then. Whether it was because I was younger. Yeah. And you know what I mean? But there was darker times. Malcolm Allison's team, yeah. which doesn't get a men hardly ever gets a mention in any of the borough history. Mm -hmm. But Big Mal came in and done a job with them players. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. the club were in dire straits at the time. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean, James? Yeah. And came for the sports like complex said, next yeah, door, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. When, when you come back from where we come from, the love just got deeper and deeper. You know what yeah, I mean? And yeah. Where we are at the moment, I know we're not in a good place, but we could be worse off. You exactly. Know what I mean? We we could, what eighty six? We were we were the berry. Yeah. We, we were berry. So yeah. Good point. We'll touch on that in a minute, uh, Tony. I mean, sometimes, like you say about the football, it's not actually what you see on the pitch, the ninety minutes or anything like that. That's the day. It's the actual whole it's actual day. Whole day. Yeah. The people. Yeah. And like you say, they, they have the own that new fan zone now, which has been a long time coming, because mm -hmm. you go around the country and there's a lot of clubs had them for a while, and I've always felt with the space we have around the ground. Well, we didn't have one of them. Yeah. But like you say, it's the full match day experience, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's came about since the new stadium came in. Yeah. But but even then, even then, at Ayrson Park, it, it was a full day then. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Up and down Linthorpe Road, yeah. Westminster and places like yeah, that. Yeah, good days out, yeah. Um, I mean, and I know you've spoken about this on many occasions, Tony, what a pleasure it is to talk to Borough fans, um, not just on the match days, but any time. It's like, all through the week, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a build up to a game. Yeah. You talk about the game, and it's what brings us all together, isn't it? Like you say, you, you don't know whether. I don't care what goes on at other clubs, really. I I just know you can go to the game on Saturday. Yeah. By Sunday morning, you're discussing the game. Yeah. Where where yeah. I was at the privileged position of speaking to the fans straight after the game for two seasons, which was fantastic. Some of the people we had on. Yeah. But like you say, it goes on. Till the next game, yeah. No matter where you exactly. are, exactly, and you can't get you can't get away from it. Yeah, no, all right. I mean, even got an even Ipswich Town fan here who's saying, "What's your opinion on Ipswich lads?" I was interviewed by the geezer. It must be you. Well, you, <laughs> you're two on, seasons ago, you're on about the Ipswich fans, right? <laughs> yeah. Th this is like you say these social media sites and these type of programs. Our last visit to Ipswich, which was a Tuesday or Wednesday night. Tuesday about this time last yeah. year, about one um, year. There was actually a family there from Ipswich who didn't go to the game. Yeah. 
we just came to want to get on Borough Fan TV. Amazing, and, it. It. and that shows the power of things like this. Yeah, yeah. and uh, like you say, look, I can. Have Oliver, it Oliver Allen, yeah. Yeah. So nice, nice for you Obvi- to come on, Oliver. You obviously nice. made an impression there. Obviously yeah. made an impression, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's got some other comments there. Phil Conway, regular with the show. Thanks for watching, Phil and Keen. Uh, Keen's a little bit worried about the direction the club's going in a minute. I don't want the season to be over in September. Um, five games so far we've been in, he said, and we've finished one nil. What I would say to that is that every game we've been in has been close so far. Yeah. Either we've won or lost. We haven't been a million miles no. away, so. No. That like gives you some hope, doesn't it? Yeah, like you say, people may be comparing it to Pulis, but mm-hmm. I think we've got a bit more off going forward yeah. than when Pulis was here. Yeah. Uh, I think we're all concerned about which direction the club's going in. Yeah. It's you can go back to the what the transfer window. Uh, Tony, I think I, you can I go always, back to any yeah. amount of the last few yeah. transfer windows, can you? But they've brought Woodgate in. Mm-hmm. They haven't backed in one hundred percent for me. The the three signings which we made, in my eyes, were three third division players or first division players, whatever yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. call them. Yeah. And as you know, with the big teams, the teams at the top, they know they're not going to progress. If they've won the league, they've won the Champions League, they're not going to progress the following season unless they bring fresh blood in yeah. or better players in than what they've got, yeah. which we haven't done, mm. which is... It, that is a concept. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't think you can dress it up any other way than no. the club financially is in a different place now than what they've been in yeah. the past. So yeah. needs must, and he's had to cut back. Um, and I think maybe that's what deterred some managers from taking on the job. Yeah. And hence why Jonathan Woodgate's got the job. And, and I think now he's got to be given time to get on with it. Uh, and I don't see any sense in making managerial changes quickly. And so I think expectations have to be lowered a little bit. And I still see people going on about things like should be challenging for promotion or top six for me I've that's out felt, the window I've, ne- I've never felt that since the day of Woodgate got yeah, the job yeah. it was always going to be a could be a couple of transition seasons or yeah. whatever they want to call it it's now. a rebuild you know what now, I mean? isn't it? it's definitely a rebuild and yeah. we have to we, like you say that word faith and keep the faith we, we do have to with yeah. Woodgate and see where it goes from there yeah but, I know, yeah. what are we 15th 15th now yeah and we've just come off the back of a four game unbeaten run yeah so he has got some idea how to put his team out and put a run together. So we just have to be, we just have to trust the guy with yeah. the, with our team. You yeah. know what I mean? I think we just got to be competitive this year, and that's what we're going to be. I think we're going to be competitive in the league, but we're not going to be challenging at the top. And I think, like you say, at the end of the day, only three teams are going to go up. We've spent a fair bit of money over the last two seasons, and we haven't yeah. gone close to going no. up. So you can't. There's keep definitely doing no that. blueprint to get out this league. No, is there? no, anyone no, can grow know, up. It, yeah. Who's to say that we don't have to spend any money at all and could go up this season or next yeah. season? It could happen, but yeah. um, I just think this year, like you say, Tony, this year definitely is going to be a rebuild, isn't it? Yeah, the, like a lot of the players there, it's still a similar, pretty much similar squad to mm-hmm. what we had last season. So, till he does find some funds from somewhere, Gibson, you know, there's not going to be much rebuilding going on. No, not in terms um, of signings, no. Unless some of this youth that we have does come through. Mm-hmm. Then, like Roy Keane said on the... I think it was Roy Keane or... What, what was the other pundit that was on? Sooner said, like you say, some of these youth, they, they might have hit their peak now. Yeah. And, you know, how many do fall by the wayside? Yeah. And yeah. are they going to get any better than what they are now? Mm-hmm. And I think we're seeing that with the likes of Rashford yeah. and his other mate up front. Yeah. Uh, What's he called? Lin- Lingard, Jesse Lingard, Lingard. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they don't seem to progress much since the first come on the scene. Yeah, yeah. And we've got players similar to that at the Borough, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, we'll touch on that in a minute. I mean, uh, about Lewis Wing, who obviously got taken out of the starting 11 at the weekend, and um, Tavernier's hardly featured at all this season. Yeah. He was one of the big hopes last season, but we'll talk about those lads in a minute. Just before we move on with the financial situation, obviously we've supported the club for a number of years, Tony. Bolton and Berry have both hit financial troubles recently. Berry going out the league, Bolton close to going out the league. Uh, it's only just over 30 years ago that we were in that situation. So it's something we can relate to. How bad do you, though is it for a town to lose its football club? Berry, oh, them fans, them Berry fans, who are they going to go support now? Yeah. They've supported Berry for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, some of them. You don't support Berry for the glory, do you? No, and you, they've been going to Berry 
every week, every mm-hmm. other week, mm-hmm. to watch their hometown, yeah. to watch Bury, yeah. and they've got nothing now. Yeah, they can't even go even watch them in the Northern League or yeah. a local league because they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And these people who are coming in buying football clubs, they just totally disregard the fans. Yeah. It's, it's for all their own means. Their their vanity. Mm-hmm. I own a football club. Just on a bit of an ego but trip. Like, what's Berry like on a Saturday afternoon now? Like that pub that was on the TV. Mm-hmm. What does the pies, the chips, does yeah, the yeah. meals, yeah. every... You know, th- that's going to go down the swan. Yeah, because it's not just your hardcore fans that go to the games. It's everybody, and you know as well as I do, when the Borough do well, it's something that's talked about throughout the town. Yeah. People that aren't followers that go to the games know that the Borough do well. Or if the Borough got to say the playoff final or yeah. when they have a big cup game, everybody in the town talks Look about how, the football team. Like you say, Middlesbrough Town Centre, it's not the most prosperous mm-hmm. town centre in the country, but when the Borough are doing well yeah. on a weekend or on a night game, yeah. the place is absolutely buzzing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 tragic that, like you say, Berry won the FA Cup twice. Mm-hmm. FA Cup winners, yeah. not existing no more, James. Yeah, yeah it's not and right, it, is it? No, definitely not yeah. right. I mean, I yeah. think it puts into sharper focus the work and the commitment of Steve Gibson, doesn't it? Um, yeah. And we're fortunate, whether people agree with the, the path that he's taking the club down the moment, but we are fortunate to have somebody that cares about the club. And yeah, from pe- the area at the helm, aren't we? People saying he hasn't got enough money now, you need to be a billionaire, this, you need to have billions to do with this. Do you? Do you want a football club or don't you? Yeah, well, that's it. That's you know, at the end of the know, day, yeah, yeah. I, w- I wouldn't mind being a pe- if he's poor with 178 million, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll I, take I wouldn't that, mind. Yeah. I wouldn't mind being just behind him in the poor stakes. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I mean, do you think what's happening financially at the club? You think that's driving maybe his quest to bring the EFL to task regarding the ruling on financial fair play with the likes of Derby, Sheffield, and Reading? Yeah. And do you agree with his plans to potentially sue the football league? If if clubs have been doing wrong, they need to be brought to task, but yeah. is Steve Gibson the man to be putting his head above the trench to be doing that? He seems to be the only one brave enough, doesn't he? At the yeah, minute? and if it is the way you've put it, is it, is it affecting our club by um, abiding to fair play rules and you know, playing it by the book when the all argument. the others are cheating? I think, that's, you know it, I think that's his argument. He's saying, well, hang on a minute. I could have maybe done something with our ground last year or brought some money in another way to increase the players that we brought in. Wouldn't have guaranteed that we'd have gotten the playoffs or won those playoffs, but he's saying, hang on, let, if these clubs are doing that and bending the rules, now we've found out that they are doing that, what's going to be done to stop it from happening again in the future? Yeah, from, from the outside looking in, if say if you were a Villa fan or a Derby fan, it, it's looking like sour grapes, mm-hmm. mainly Villa who went up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's not sour grapes, it's, it's just what it was... The rules were brought in to be abided by, and yeah. like these are clever people. Yeah, they have lots of people around them to, to find out loopholes exactly. and get yeah. around these things. So, yeah. yeah, fair play to them if they've got away with it. But yeah, yeah. they're always want, they're all, they were always going to get caught out anyway. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? So, and that's it. Uh, I know um, Phil, you've come up with, with a comment with regards to what uh, Steve Gibson's spending on things outside of the football club but surely that's his prerogative that if he, yeah. he's got money he, he yeah. can spend it however which way he wants yeah no one tells us how to spend our money yeah and I think over the years know. he's certainly put enough money into the football club hasn't yeah. he um, we, we don't no we just buy tickets to go to the match yeah. we're fans it's our club but we don't own it no, no. It, it is and whatever he's spending in his personal life that's totally up to him yeah you know what yeah. I mean it's only what we'd all do yeah yeah good point good point um, I mean, looking back at the Reading game, so you know, just over a week ago, and matters on the pitch, they were a big three points to get that day. Yeah. I mean, I know we've gone four games undefeated now. Yeah. Um, but it's always crucial to have a good home record because that's the ma- where the majority of your fans yeah. see the team. So yeah. it's really important that we get a good home record behind us this year, isn't it? Like you say, we haven't had a decent run at home for a while now. Yeah. And if we can turn that into a bit of a fortress. And we can get an unbeaten run going at home. It's only going to help put bums on seats, and also a lot of some of the games at Ayrson Park, yeah. where it was backs against the wall last twenty minutes, and the goalkeepers flying all over the goal, all over the goal line, and pulling off terrific saves. And it's a funny thing, Mac Tony, because I think after the game, Jonathan Woodgate was very, very bullish about the performance and saying, "Oh well, yeah, we had a bit of luck with maybe one or two things, but we haven't had luck in other games, and yeah, I thought we thoroughly deserved the win." 
I'll be honest, I thought Reading deserved something from that game, especially with the final. I thought the first half was pretty even. I thought the last 20, 25 minutes they had us right under I'm, the pressure. I'm really there. surprised that Redden, there's been Redden fans on social media also this weekend screaming for their manager to be sacked. But they've got some fantastic footballers. Oh, oh they brought off the bench as well. That's swift. Yes. What a footballer. Unbelievable footballer. Well, I thought him and Ajari are in Ajari, midfield. Good he, footballers, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, really good. They were a good team to watch. Yeah. And when they got the bit between the teeth, 20 minutes towards the end, yeah. they, they were... They were a great team to watch, yeah. but we stayed solid. Yeah, you know what I mean. And it was, you know, it was a good game of football. Yeah, it was. It was a decent championship game. I mean, I thought Adam Clayton probably had his best game of the he season. He had one of so his far. best games for us for a I long time. Were, and I tell you what, I was impressed with that day. Who got better after a shaky start was Ryan Shotton, and I'm pleased for the lad because he seems to have been a little bit he's of a scapegoat. Yeah, he? and, and I'd say the last three games, he's. You know, he's been... As good as anyone, really, up, hasn't he? Yeah. His yeah. head's still a bit <laughs> suspect, but he has stepped up and yeah. you, you can't, you know, yeah. you can't fault his performances for the last three games, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Matthew Groves was just pointed out there, we played three at the back and two wing-backs against Reading. I think we did do that after we went a goal we up. We went a goal up. And, and he did that against Wigan at home as well, didn't he? We've done that against Wigan yeah. and it worked well there. It yeah. didn't work so well against Reading. Yeah. And it... Definitely didn't work on Saturday. It was Saturday against Cardiff, but yeah. I felt the game against Wigan when we done it, we looked a lot more solid. We did. I mean, we closed that game out really well. I think we rode our luck last week against Reading, didn't we? And yeah. I mean, again, and I've lost count of how many times we've said this over the last two years. Darren Randolph. See, do you know, like when they say the keeper kept them in it. Yeah. But is isn't it a case for saying the keeper contributed to the one nil win? It's his job. <laughs> yeah. It's a fair point of saying you know it's his right? job. But I'll be honest, the uh, keeper saved you. Well, yeah. he, he didn't really contribute to a one nil win. Yeah. You know what I mean. So, how many points would you estimate he's worth a season to the borough? Though, how right, many there's points? There's three. Oh, yeah. Three against Reading. Yeah. Oh, I good, would honestly put goal. it between about 15, 20, 20 points. points. You've got to say twenty yeah. points. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. Like you say, the, the, the great teams that win championships, they always say the goalkeeper's worth a good 15, 20 points at yeah. the end of the season. Yeah. You know what I mean. So. Yeah. No, but it is definitely worth his weight in gold at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Considering a couple of the week before, people were saying he's got off to a shaky start. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think and that's unfair on the lad because yeah. I mean his standards are, are right up here, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. He, he is a top-notch goalkeeper, and I think uh, we're very fortunate to have him still playing at the Borough. And I think the, the test of how good he is is when, unfortunately, when he does move on, yeah. he'll be very hard to replace, won't he? Yeah, something we can thank Gary Monk for. Yeah, yeah, we'll get on to Gary Monk as well in a bit. He's making his return to uh, the Riverside at the weekend. But yeah, one of his few good signings, I would say, to yeah. be honest. Um, yeah, really good signing. Yeah, I mean... Uh, For five million, was it five million quid or something? Yeah, so? yeah, yeah. And, and you think of the, the goalkeeping problems West Ham have had in recent years. Yeah. You think, I'm surprised they let him go. You look at goalkeepers now at Southampton. Oh, I don't watch that much because it's Southampton and who were they playing the other day? Played Bournemouth on Friday night. Bournemouth and yeah. their goalkeeper. They look yeah. like two young English lads. Yeah. I'd say Randall Randolph's head and shoulders above both of them. So Well, I certainly think he could do a job for most teams yeah, in the Premier League. Definitely. Without a doubt. Um and I think he will end up there pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, and whether that's with us or not, I, I, I think uh, it's pretty much guaranteed, especially if he gets to the Euros next year with Ireland. Yeah. He'll be in the shop window again, and I think it'll only be a matter of time before he's back playing in the top flight. Um, Saul Starling said, just about transfer speculation, I know it's a long way to the January transfer window, Borough, one of three clubs reportedly keeping tabs on Wolves defender Cameron John. Can't say I know a great deal no, about him, to be honest. You'll never be forgotten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll go on to the weekend's game now, so I mean... In the week leading up to the match at Cardiff, Jonathan Woodgate revealed that he gets into his office nice and early on a morning. Sometimes has uh, Pavarotti blasting out Eminem and Oasis yeah. on his playlist. Well, Saturday's performance was a bit more shady with very little glory going for yeah, it, wasn't it? I definitely, mean, yeah. I know we went to Blackburn a few weeks ago, and I think by all accounts... What I listened to... It was a very similar yeah, performance to the Blackburn yeah, one. What I listened to, I just thought, this just sounds like what happened at Blackburn. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it's something we're going to have to get used to this season in terms of the Borough, them type of performances? I think it's something where Woodgate has to get smarter because Tony Mowbray, Wiley Old manager, been yeah. round for a while. Warnock been around since the dinosaurs <laughs> and they've known they've done a job on us yeah. do you know what I mean so 
Yeah. It's up the Woodgate now. It's uh, it's all right him s- sitting there doing all his own work on Warnock and knowing how many games he'd been involved with and his teams and all that. He he should have worked out. Should have been sat working out away. You know what is it? This game game management tactics these teams come out with. Yeah. Uh, we've we've got to find a way around that because that's twice now with Blackburn. And Cardiff. Yeah, once yeah. they went, once we went one nil down yeah. at Cardiff, yeah. Neil Warnock team two minutes. Could you see us getting back into that, James? The, the, the problem for me sometimes is Tony. I think we sometimes get too wrapped up in the tactics of games. I mean, I know exactly, Danny Ayala yeah. has come out today and said, "Well, we did the main thing, which was match them up physically." Well, we might have matched them up physically, but, but we've lost. We've put no points on the board. We haven't. We, we haven't had a shot on target in ninety minutes, which was pretty much the same as at Blackburn. So it's all right saying we've done this right and that right with tactics. Those two games we've ended up with no points. We keep bringing our centre forwards back to defend corners, mm. right? We've got the worst record now for defending corners. I, I think, think we look very. Goals. I think we look very shaky goals. from set pieces. Like six goals. So why do we have to bring Sombolonga and Fletcher back into our box? Yeah. If we play three centre halves to match them physically, yeah. Why aren't we leaving two men up mm-hmm. so they've got to leave at least two of their big guys or yeah. three of theirs? Yeah. Take them away from the penalty yeah. area. The way Maddo was talking on Saturday, the lads left Middlesbrough at 12 o'clock to go to Cardiff by plane on Friday. They never right. got there till after 9 o'clock. Nine hours it took. That's defeating the object then, really, isn't yeah, it? Going so, on the plane. And the way Maddo was talking, that first corner was the lads were just ambling into the box yeah. and they decided to fire a quick one in and... Yeah. Fletcher wasn't even in position. He was just trotting into position, and he, he obviously he was a strike. He's put his head at it, and it's gone in. Yeah, yeah. I know Matthew uh, Groves. He was at the game at the weekend. Said no shots on target. Pretty much sums it up. We lack creativity. Couldn't string two passes together, um, and we dropped to their level and started hoofing it. And again, we've said before we came on air tonight. Obviously, the club have decided to go down the route that they have with Jonathan Woodgate. And in fairness, he's trying to change the, the mindset of the players and yeah. the club from what they've had the last two years. But sometimes people are going to throw that back and say, hang on a minute, where's this attacking football, yeah. possession football, when at the end of the day, we've gone to Cardiff, and yeah, you might have matched them up physically, but then we're just hoofing balls and getting absolutely yeah. nowhere with it. See, it, it, my, the alarm bells rang with me last week when he said it was a great win at Redden. I know we want to play. I know the way I want to play, mm-hmm. but... Sometimes we have to win ugly or play ugly. And I can, ac- I can accept that. I can accept right. that. Yeah, yeah. But he sold this philosophy at the start of the season. As we mentioned earlier, two seasons ago now, Gibson said he's going to smash the league when he brought Gary Monk in. Mm. And he's never been heard of or seen or spoke since. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To the fans. And Woodgate's going down a similar road by preaching this high press we're going to score more goals than you type of football. All right, if you've got the place to do it, that's all we have at the minute. No, no, we? and it's not happening. Yeah. So he's had a lot of criticism since he took the job, but he's had quite a lot over the weekend on social yeah. media about these statements he keeps coming out with in his press conferences. So yeah. I must admit, I was a little bit taken aback, Tony, after the game on Saturday um, when I was listening to the phone in coming back from another game about how critical Borough fans were. Now, I, I get we'd lost, and it was a disappointing performance. Um, we'd lost 1-0 to Cardiff, a team that's just come down from the Premier League. But I must admit, I was taken aback by the level of criticism towards Jonathan Woodgate, and a, a fair few people calling for his head. And I was like, yeah. oh, we're in September, we've had eight games, and people are saying, get rid of the manager. And I'm yeah. like, and I know you've just mentioned there about the Reading situation. There. They've spent a load of money this summer. Yeah. The below us in the table. Uh, do you think that's just the culture of football now? The a... fans just want rid of the man. So because no doubt, if we win on Saturday against Sheffield Wednesday, we'll be the greatest thing since sliced bread yeah. again, won't we? Yeah, like you say, I think it's culture at every club. Yeah, I think there must be two sects of happy supporters up and down this country. Well, up and down England, which is Man City and Liverpool. They must be the only two happy bunch of supporters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? Because uh, I dare say there's less. Everyone's comes in. You know, on a white horse, and then they're getting booed. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we're screaming for the reds. There's a lot less. Five or six games. There's a lot less tolerance now. I think, like you mentioned earlier on, in the, at the top of the short night about the Malcolm Allison era. You go back to the Malcolm Allison era, even Willie Madron, club legend, playing legend, but the football and the what we saw in those days. But you didn't hear people calling for the manager to be no, sacked. No. Not eight games into a season. No. And 
those managers both I think managed the club for around two years. Yeah. Now you're getting people who a, jo- a manager was in his job, his first job, eight games in, and he's already under pressure from some fans. Um, I mean, I'm you, you, like you say, he, he's had a lot of players sold from under him. People yeah. say he hasn't. He has. Mm. You know. He inherited Pulis's squad. We still had some decent players in there, and we've sold them. Yeah. And it, when when he was appointed manager, it just reminded me so much of when Bobby Murdoch got the job. Yeah. When the money was starting to disappear, the big name players. And all comes around, but Gibson needs to be careful, you know what I mean? Because we we could go back. We can't to less than to ten thousand yeah, in, in yeah, the stadium yeah, because yeah. we can't afford to do that. We're not not just Borough fans. Every fan in this country is fickle. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You know. No one's thick or thin. You you die yards, you get down to your four, five, to I'd say eight thousand die yeah. yards. Yeah. There's there's people goes to the riverside who've never been to a game till the riverside was built. And and, that, and this is going to be hard for them to take. Yeah. What's and this is what, this, these are the this. people who were yeah. uh, who are struggling with the situation at the moment. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, funnily enough, I don't. Know, it's an ironic thing because Borough youth. If you are only a youth, you're coming out with some great stuff here. Borough fans need to be realistic. We've been punching above our weight for years. Um, and mid-table this season and a few young ones blooded will be a fair season. I can't disagree with any of that. I think that's absolutely yeah. spot on. And um, like I say, I, th- I don't think... I think the fans have been punching above the weight for the last few seasons. I think we've been at our level since we went down with Southgate. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, because yeah, we've, we've, had we've one threatened nothing since then. Yeah, we had the one, had one promotion. Yeah, yeah. And... It's us fans who punch above our weight. It's us fans who have the expectations. It's us fans who are, you know, shouting down prayers at them and then the next week booing them and, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair point. I mean, you look at other clubs that are in the championship, but there's clubs that, whether you like it or not, in my opinion, are bigger than the Borough. You've got European Cup winners in Nottingham yeah. Forest. Leeds, huge club, big yeah. city club. Blackburn. Blackburn Leeds, won the Premier, Premier League. League. Sheffield Sheff- Wednesday. You've got clubs like that yeah. that are nowhere near, have not been anywhere near being in the Premier League since we have. Yet, you know, we're going on as, oh, hey, well, what's going on at our club and this, that and the other. And I, I just think sometimes you've got to take a little bit of a reality check and say, right, we are we are where we are. We all pay, yeah, we are where we are. We all pay a lot of money to go to games. That's the thing. That's, a, that's what's different, I suppose, from we, 20, 30 yeah, years we, ago, we, isn't it? But you were paying a lot of money 20, 30 years ago at the end of the yeah. day. It was still a day a day out. Mm-hmm. And... You, you go on now and people feel they have the which they have they have the right to stress their opinions at the game. Yeah. But now now I feel the Woodgate it's a time for where everyone does have to get together and get behind him. Yeah. You know, we we said it on the last show. You know, give the lad some encouragement. He's not gonna get it right every week. Yeah. You know, the players aren't gonna perform mm-hmm. IE against Luton, Bristol City every week. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we we just have to be patient and I know some of our viewers tonight have mentioned about this, and I think it's a fair point in terms of criticism of Jonathan Woodgate, was on Saturday he didn't make any changes until the final 20 minutes of the game, and that seems to be something that's happening a fair bit. Yeah, you think that's a fair criticism? Struggle. Yeah, he yeah. seems to struggle with his substitutions. Yeah, he doesn't, yeah. you know, he's not very reactive mm. with his substitutions, yeah. you know what I mean? Because, so, like you say... Or proactive, yeah, yeah. whichever way you want to look at it. It did seem as all like the Blackburn game. It was a match that was just drifting along, and by all accounts, Cardiff were no great shakes at no, the weekend either. No. And it just feels like an opportunity missed there that we've maybe taken something from that game. Well, like you say, he's, he's set up totally different. He, mm-hmm. He's, you know, for first time, he's set up the three centre-halves. Yeah. But reading Eric Taylor tonight in the Gazette, like you say, them three centre-halves are most probably three of the better players at the club. So while they're at the club, why not use them? Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Play to your saying. strengths. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But we still didn't defend the corner. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I think what... It, Top and bottom of it now, Tony, is I think Jonathan Woodgate will be looking for a reaction from those players, as the fans will on Saturday against Chef Wed. Um, I mean, it's a big, big game, and it won't be easy. Um, they're just outside the top six at the minute. Yeah. They've still got a squad that's got a lot of big-name players in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll know all about Adam Reach. Got Barry Bannon, who's a very good player at this yeah. level. Um, Who always seems to do well against us. Yeah. Kieran Westwood, Darren Randolph's international colleague. And yeah competitor for the number one spot in the Republic of Ireland and Stephen Fletcher's been banging in the goals from this weekend yeah. so it's going to be a tough one isn't it yes yeah, so for some reason this season Sheffield Wednesday think they have a chance I don't know whether it's because it's 
the way they've started the season, they, they feel as if they've got a chance for promotion. So they're going to bring a hell of a good following on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be, like you say, it's going to be no pushover on Saturday, which I don't think any game is no. in, the, in the championship. No, I think we've said this before as well, haven't we? I think the championship is wide open this yeah. season. I think that's maybe why clubs like Sheffield Wednesday I think they've got a half yeah. decent chance. And like you say there about ourselves, I don't think there's anyone in this league this year where we can take them for granted or underestimate no. them. Every game's yeah. going to be a real battle and a tough game. You just look at, like you say, you're looking at Huddersfield struggling, just come down. Yeah. You know what I mean? But even in the Stokes, scored two goals yesterday at West Brom and looked a little bit dangerous. And I'm thinking we're going there in a month's yeah. time. They'll be probably. I like their manager as well, who they've brought in. God, you look at managers and you look at the job they've done at Lincoln. Yeah. And then the team they've just left. Yeah, yeah. Being beat twice. Yeah. In Six nil at home on games. Saturday, yeah. Being only being beat twice in about 48 games yeah, yeah. and they go get battered 6 0. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, managers do count and managers matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And talking to managers in the opposition dugout at the weekend. Mr. Monk. Yeah, old Slippery Snake himself, Gary yeah, Monk. He hasn't yeah. covered himself in glory no, while he, he was at the Borough and since he's left. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, obviously, he's still employable and. None of this mud seems to have stuck. Yeah, you know, with these dodgy dealings or alleged dodgy, dodgy dealings. It's funny, isn't it, that he seems to be very popular when managerial posts come up. He's, always, his name's yeah. always in the frame, and people are willing to take a punt on him. And now I know at Birmingham, he probably did a half decent job. Um, they loved him. Yeah, Brum fans yeah. loved him. So, and maybe that's what Sheffield Wednesday have looked at and thought, you know what? Yeah, he might be the man to get us out this yeah. league. Um, but it'd be nice to hand him his first defeat as a Sheffield manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, we've done him. When he came as Birmingham yeah. manager, didn't we? So yeah. definitely. But like you say, he he brought Darren Randolph to our club. So yeah, yeah. Johnny Owson as well. John, Johnny Owson. Yeah. And the sooner he's fitter, the better. Yes, I mean that was an amazing comeback that he was back in the squad at the weekend, wasn't he? Yeah. Days after an operation, and he's yeah. back. I mean, uh, also lower swing, the former lower swing. He, he's. It's a concern, isn't it? He, he, I mean, he's been our talisman for. Certainly last season Since he last was. Season, wasn't he? The Leeds yeah. game last season mm. where he was immense. And he, he was always our standout player. Mm. And it hasn't happened for him yet this season. No. So whether he has been carrying a knock or whether he is, you know, it's caught up with him a bit and he's needed a rest. Yeah. Like, if we get him playing, if we get Lewis Wing playing and he finds his range, we're in business. Yeah. Do you know what? It wouldn't surprise me, Tony, if he's back in the starting eleven at the weekend and he goes on and has a great game. And I think maybe that's just a bit of a master stroke by the management team to say, right, take him out the firing line, give the lad a break. Because for whatever reason, he hasn't been doing it so yeah. far this season. Um, and just put him in. He'll be fresh and hungry for that in the game. I think there'll be a big match atmosphere at the weekend. Over yeah. 20,000 should be Do you feel he's caught... Uh, in a position where he's not sure where he needs to be? Oh, I think that's a fair point. And, you yeah. know, is he a... Is he a forward thinking midfielder or is he a number ten? Is he playing yeah. where, where's is he's he been out the, the wing? Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of that to be um, and at the end of the day he's still only learning the game, isn't he? Yeah. He, the he, last, season, game, yeah. last season was his first full season as a professional player and even then he didn't really come in until about October, November. Yeah. So it's a lad that's learning the game and now all of a sudden from having to play one certain type of way, you're changing all that. And it, it, it is gonna take time and like you've said and other people have been mentioning tonight on the show. It is a season of transition, isn't it? Yeah. This this is going to happen this year, isn't it? As long as we can keep our keep our heads above water, mm-hmm. and you know, don't want to be sitting three or four points above relegation places come December. Yeah, we, yeah. You, you don't know, want that pressure, we, do you? No, we we want to if we can get up in that top half and look comfortable. You know what I mean? That'll be a good season. For Win us. four or five games on the trot, and yeah. then it, oh. yeah. Keeps keep a couple of clean sheets. Yeah. Which which was nice against Redden. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was you know. welcome that, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean so, the two games we've won were both yeah. clean sheets at home, one nil matches. So Yeah, David Jackson at Borough, Monk's best game was uh, the game when he was sacked against Sheffield Wednesday. I, I would probably tend to agree that with that. That was uh that Just, was a strange game as well because yeah. Lead boots missed the penalty. He did, yeah. And everyone was going absolute loopies and we were you know, we were going, yeah. and it was a surprise that night when yeah. Monk got the sack. Yeah, it was. I, I must admit, I was. And the other fella got the sack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carver Hall, yeah, they both yeah. got the sack after that game, yeah. Uh, Kean Finn's mentioned there, thanks for watching, Kean. I think Fletcher needs a rest as well. Now, who, would, but, who, who would you replace him with? Yeah. There's the what do you do? Do you just go a bit up front? Mm-hmm. You know, who, to change who, the formation then? Who, who can come in and replace him, or do you rest him and yeah. put wing up with. Fletcher uh, yeah. with Assemble on there. Yeah. 
it's the, the squad's so thin. Yeah, I mean, I watched the under twenty threes on Friday night, um, and they lost four three at home to West Ham, and they had the lad Barella we bought from Grimsby in the summer. He yeah. scored, but he looks really raw, and you can see yeah. he's not ready yet for first team yeah. football, certainly not championship level. Um, so, like you say, what is he in reserve? Your your other centre forwards injured at the minute, Gestead, and, and would you replace Fletcher with Gestead? Uh, if Gestead was fit, you'd have to, because mm. he, he did mention a few weeks back in press conferences about how thin the squad was, and mm. you know how we couldn't expect Brit and Fletcher to keep banging at the door week in week out. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it'll absolutely burn them out. Yeah. So, yeah, if, I dare say if Gestead was fit, we would see a change, but yeah. We're so lightweight. We're and, that, so and, that, and that's the problem, isn't it? We're running with a squad as small as we have this year, or certainly up till January, that you're going to be stuck with what you can pick and choose every week. I think it might be even summers. We're going to struggle to have enough men on the bench. Yeah, yeah, because definitely, because there's, there's absolutely... There's no depth, no, you know what I mean? No. And and I think that definitely needs to be addressed And if there, was any, if there was anyone in the under-23s, you know, knocking at the door, they'd have had a, tra- they'd have had a run out by now. Yeah. Yeah. But there's only the young kid Walker who came on against Blackburn who's yeah. who seems to be the only one the other option, yeah. who's getting the getting the option. But yeah. I can't see a massive game on Saturday, Sheffield Wednesday, him dropping Brits or Fletcher. No, no, I think they'll start, especially with the no midweek game this yeah. week, yeah, definitely. Um, Would you like to see him stay with the five at the back or um I I'd be tempted to start with it. I don't know. I, I just think maybe when you're at home, and I think people are maybe looking at, in fairness, Dyke, Steele and Bowler are both good going forward. I think they are better going forward than they are yeah. defensively. But I think, again, it's asking a lot of them to be the yeah. your main outlets to, Cause like to you create said, Johnson, things. Because Johnson's come from on the right wing to the left back. Yeah, yeah. And that, that looked like it had totally upset him. Yeah. Because I think he had a bit of a mare. So it's going to be a tester for him. Yeah. Like you say, at home game, you know, Four three three. How he's been playing? I think you probably will start yeah. with that. I'll be honest, Tony. I think you will start that way. Um, and like I say, I think Johnson will start rather than Brown. I think Brown's still finding his feet. Isn't yeah, he, he um, didn't do much when he came on Saturday. No. He had a chance on Saturday. Yeah, no, he, he still. And it was a tight game for someone like him. Yeah. To to put a stamp on it, but it, it never happened for him either. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a fair point. So with that in mind, what do you reckon the score is going to be on Saturday, Tony? Right, I got, I, 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 I got Saturdays right. Did you say one at the car? I'll be, yeah. I'll be honest. I, I didn't expect a great deal from there, and one nil. I thought actually wasn't as bad as I, I feared. To be honest, the way things are at the moment, I can only go a two-one defeat. Do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna go the other way. I think we'll win Saturday. Yeah, I think we'll beat Sheffield on Saturday. I think uh, we'll get inspired by the big game, and I think I think we'll put in a good performance against a decent team, which. I think some of our better performances this season, this season against the likes of Bristol City have been against sides that have maybe come out and had a go. And I think Sheffield yeah. will have a go. Hopefully, hopefully they'll come out and have a go. Like yeah. you say, it, it, that, that plays into how Pul- uh, Pulis, <laughs> that plays into how Woodgate wants yeah. to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it gives him a chance to showcase yeah. his philosophy on football. Yeah. Like you say, Bristol City w- it was unbelievable. You know, and. Not every team's going to want to attack from minute one no, against us. No, so. no. And that's it. And I think even Cardiff on Saturday didn't come out all guns blazing no. as it was a very cagey game and, and hence you got the result that you did and, and the type of game that you got. But I think Sheffield will come here and have a go because I think that's the other bonus of them bringing so many fans. I don't think they'll three, their 3,000 fans will come here expecting them to sit back. They'll encourage yeah. them to have a go. Have a go yeah. So I think that'll, that'll work in our favour. Like you say, it's that time of the season. What? We're not even at the second international break no. and fans are looking at the club's position and the top of the championship now is, is more <laughs> condensed as yeah, what it's ever yeah. been. Well, that's, I think even if we were to win on Saturday, potentially we can't go any higher than 13th yeah. because we're, there's already a three-point gap between us now and 12th. Yeah. Um, and I just think that's probably where we're going to be kicking about this year, Tony, to be honest, Hopefully. between 13th and 18th. But Hopefully. No lower than that, fingers crossed yet. Yeah. Just before we leave Sheffield Wednesday, connection between them and the Borough, probably our greatest ever signing on Sheffield Wednesday, with the greatest respect, Mark Proctor, would be John Ickton, um, 75 years old today. I mean, I get told he was, he was my dad. He was yeah. great to hear over my dad, and, uh, and obviously... When I was a kid. Yeah, I think everyone on T side wanted to be John Ickton, yeah, didn't they? When I was a kid, 
and uh, still can't remember my first game. It was Stan Anderson. Stan Anderson was manager, but I always remember Big John and Jackie Charlton's team. And yeah. you know, like you always wanted to be on the goal when Big John got a penalty. And <laughs> They're absolutely legendary then. Yeah, the penalties, unbelievable. But him, him and Alan Foggan. Yeah. The, you know, I'd say Bob, uh, Jack Charlton. Well, he was a bit of a Mourinho at, at his time. He'd get his one nil and defend. But also speaks volumes is that people have met him. Not only when he played for the Borough, but after he finished playing football, people that have met him and I've had the privilege to meet him once. So what a gentleman he is yeah. as well. Lovely bloke. Yeah. Sp- nothing but fond memories of his time at Middlesbrough. And always speaks highly of the club and the town and its fans. He he is someone that deserves to be thought of in the highest. Uh, when you say all these players now all yeah. have the names on the back of the shirts, you know what I mean. Yeah. And yeah. there's certain players at certain clubs there in the seventies, the eighties. They didn't need the name. You just yeah. knew that if you seen that big white number nine. Yeah. On the back of that red yeah. shirt, you know it was, you know it was Big John. Yeah, you know what I mean. No one else could. Yeah. Obviously, he had the squad numbers then, but you, you just knew. And but since then, I've always wanted someone, you know, from Middlesbrough, that, and I thought we'd get it with Yuval. Yeah, I've always wanted a strike. A local to, lad, to local doing lad it. to score twenty goals a season. It's a funny one, that isn't it, Tony? Because we seem to have no problem at all producing centre half, left backs, but <laughs> centre forward, local centre forwards, and hopefully Stephen Walker might be the one. Yeah, but we've lost count of the number of local lads. Campbell, and really, Campbell, yeah, went by the Danny Graham, side. Danny Graham. Yeah, there's there's a long list of local lads who, yeah. who you've wanted. Curtis Main was he a local Curtis lad? Curtis Main, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And Harry but, Chapman, yeah. I know he played maybe played number ten, but lads that have like looked the part yeah. at the lower levels of the, at the club or the the age groups at their levels. But when it's come to the first team, it's just not happened. David Dodgson, he he must have been the Ochi, last one, yeah. wasn't he? He Ochi, must have yeah. been the last decent homegrown centre forwards, you know, or yeah. straight or whatever yeah, you want yeah. to call them. Yeah, because there, there hasn't been many, no. if there, if any. No, because like you say. <laughs> Slaven's been the, you know, oh. he's been the main man for God yeah, knows how yeah. many seasons. Yeah. No, no one can touch his yeah. record. No, that's a fair point. No, it is. It's a good point that. Um, well, we've run out of time again for another week, Tony. It's absolutely it's flies by when you're on here, mate. Yeah. Um, great Monday night show as always with you being Thanks, on. James. Anybody Pleasure. wants to join us on the Monday night show, get in touch with us here at Borough Fan TV. We'd love you to come on, share your views and opinions. Thanks for everybody that's been watching out there and all your thoughts uh, on the goings on at the Borough. Next week, it's the 15th anniversary of Borough's first ever away game in Europe, the night in Ostrava. So next week, <laughs> as well as looking back on the Sheffield game, we're going to have a look at that. That was an impressing night. That. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a few uh, blue plastic seats flying oh. about at one point, I seem to remember. But yeah, we're going to talk about the European days next week. So just a word of warning, Borough fans, get in touch with us. Let us know about any of your journeys across Europe in those two seasons. Uh, we're going to be talking about the European games next week, as well as looking back at the Sheffield game. We've got a midweek game as well next week against Preston. Preston. First midweek is back. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got that to look forward to as well. And an away game at Birmingham on the Friday. So, it's going to be a busy one next busy week, Tony. Weeks, yeah. yeah, busy yeah, time busy coming up. Game, sorry. Yep. So, from myself, Guesty, here at the Longlands Club, and everybody at Borough Fan TV, thanks again for watching. Good night and up the Borough. Up the Borough. So we all good, yeah. You can breathe now. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> Chris. <laughs> that reminds me of when you're hiding from the gaffer in the building. Trying to find the quickest way out of the building at the end of the day.